In this lecture, we're going to talk about static equilibrium problems. We're going to talk about the general way to attack static equilibrium problems, and we're going to look at one example problem. So with static equilibrium, it, <coughs> equilibrium problems, we are looking essentially at an application of Newton's first law. And that is, if the sum of all the forces acting on an object is equal to zero, then we know the motion of that object is constant. Specifically for static equilibrium problems, the static means not moving, at rest. So we're looking where the sum of the forces equals zero, and the object is at rest, and we want it to stay that way. This deals a lot with hanging signs, hanging objects, where the weight of the object needs to be counterbalanced with the weight of some wires or some ropes or whatever is holding it up. All right, so the very basic level, let's say we've got a bowling ball hanging here, and that bowling ball has a force going straight down on it because of gravity, we'll call it force weight. And then let's say that it's also hanging by the ceiling from a, t a wire or a rope, and so it has some force tension going straight up. And if the static equilibrium problem uh, if we want, the, <coughs> sorry, if we don't want the bowling ball to move, then we know that the sum of the forces is equal to zero, which means that the force tension plus the force weight is going to equal zero. This is the sum of the forces acting, which means that uh, since both of these forces are going in the y direction, we can just say that the force tension then has to equal the opposite of the force weight for this to be true. So this is the most basic static equilibrium problem that we've got. So let's say that our weight of our bowling ball is 100 newtons. And that's going down. So how much tension needs to be in the wire? We can plug these numbers in. Force tension is equal to the opposite of force weight. And this is where we need to be careful. In our sign conventions, down is negative. So this is negative 100. Newtons. So the opposite of negative 100 newtons is just positive 100 newtons. So our force tension in our rope or wire is straight up at 100 newtons. Now this is the simplest example of a static equilibrium problem because this is just two forces acting on an object, both of them in the y direction. Most of the time when we've got a static equilibrium problem, we have more than two forces acting on the object, and they're going in multiple directions at once. So we have to consider components of forces in the x and components of forces in the y. And that's how we attack these problems. When we set up the problem, basically we want to look at the sum of the forces in the x direction have to be equal to zero. So that's all forces that are acting purely in the x-direction or just the component of the force in the x-direction. So all components and all forces acting purely in the x-direction, the sum of that has to equal zero, and the sum of all forces acting in the y-direction also has to equal zero. All right, and when we do these problems, we have to remember our sign conventions. In the x-direction, to the right is positive, and to the left is negative. In the y-direction, up is positive and down is negative. So if we're given numbers, we've got to plug in those numbers with those sign conventions involved because we're talking here about vector addition. And if we're talking purely in the x direction, the vector direction is given by the plus and the minus sign. Purely in the y direction, again, plus and minus sign. So that simplifies our problems a little bit. So let's take a look at an example where we've got three forces acting on an object, and we want that object to be in static equilibrium. All right, so here's the setup. We have a bowling ball or a sign or some massive object with a weight of 100 newtons, and it is being suspended by two wires, one of which is making a 50-degree angle with the negative x-axis, and one of which is going straight horizontally and making a 90-degree angle. And we want to know what is the tension in wire 1 and the tension in wire 2. Tension is just a force that happens along a rope or a wire. So these T1s and T2s are tensions. All right, so first step here is we're going to draw a free body diagram. And that should be the first step 
whenever we attack problems involving Newton's laws. So we've got the force weight acting on the bowling ball going straight down. And it's given as negative 100, sorry, 100 Newtons going down. So sign convention, down is negative, so negative 100. We also have T1 going up at an angle of 50 degrees with the positive x-axis, also the negative x-axis, and we have, we had, where did it go? Oh, I didn't like that. We have T2 going purely in the negative x direction. So the task for this is we want to solve for T1 and T2. Now, what I'm going to tell you to do, and what I already said, is we want to split this up into forces and components acting in the x direction, forces and components acting in the y direction. And we want to say the sum of all the forces acting in the x direction has to equal zero. And the sum of all the forces acting in the y direction has to equal zero. Otherwise, this will not be at static equilibrium. The net force will not be zero, and it will be accelerating in some direction. Okay. So now we want to look at what forces might have components acting in the x and the y direction and consider those. Uh, the only one here that could have components in the x and y direction is going to be T1 because he is not purely pointing in the x or the y direction. So we've got T1, that component in the x direction, and we have T1 acting in the y direction. <clears throat> and we have to remember our angles here as was given on the problem, this angle right here is 50 degrees, which means because of alternate interior angles, this angle here is 50 degrees as well. So we can write down expressions now for T1 in the x direction, T1 in the y direction in terms of T1. T1 is the side adjacent to the 50 degree angle, so, uh, sorry, T1 in the x direction is adjacent, so T1 in the x direction is going to be T1 times the cos of 50 degrees, and T1 in the y direction is opposite the 50 degree angle, so T1y is going to be T1 sine of 50 degrees. T2 is pointing straight in the negative x direction, and the force weight is pointing straight in the negative y direction, so we don't have to resolve any of the other vectors into components. All right. Now we're going to go back to some of the forces in the x, some of the forces in the y equal to zero, and we're going to fill in what we've got. In the x direction, we have T2, and we have T1, just the x component of it. Those are the only vectors or components acting in the x direction. If I add those up vectorially, they should equal zero. In the y direction, we have force weight, and we have the y component of T1. When we add those guys up vectorially, we should get zero as well. All right, this is going to be our starting point. We're going to get two equations, and we're going to solve for our two unknowns, T1 and T2, using these two equations. Let's start by substituting our expression for T1 in the x direction into this equation over here, T1 in the x direction, and our equation for the y component of T1 into this equation here. So that ends up giving us T2 plus T1 cos 50 is equal to 0. Over here, I've got FW is equal to, sorry, not equal, plus T1 in the y direction is equal to 0. So two equations, two unknowns, because we have our unknown T1 and T2 and force weight is known. So let's go ahead and solve our y equation over here on the right hand side for T1. And we're actually going to be able to, oops, I didn't, let's fix that. I didn't actually substitute in the component. Let's do that. This should be plus T1 sine of 50 is equal to zero. So with just the stuff we have on the right-hand side, the only unknown in that equation is T1. We can solve for T1, so let's go ahead and do it. Subtracting force weight from both sides, we have T1 sine 50 is equal to negative force weight. And we're going to divide by sine 50, 
So T1 is equal to negative force weight divided by the sine of 50 degrees. Substituting what we have for force weight, here's where we have to be careful about our signs. The 100 newton is going down, so we have to put a negative 100 in here and divide that by the sine of 50 degrees. So we've got positive 100 over sine 50. We plug that stuff in and we end up with T1 is equal to 130.5 newtons. And that is positive because T1, uh, sorry, that doesn't have a direction, um, positive or negative. It's just going up and to the right. It has a direction 50 degrees above the positive x-axis. So that's our value for T1. Now we can take that 130.5 and plug it into our equation on the left with the x's to solve for T2. So quick solving for T2 here, we get negative T1 cos 50 after we move it to the other side. And we substitute the 130, so we have negative 130 times cos 50. And when we plug that into the calculator, we end up with a value for T1 of negative 83.9. The negative in this case makes sense because T2 is going in the straight negative direction. So we end up with the negative x direction. All right, so 83.9 newtons of tension in wire 1 and 130.5 sorry, 83.9 in wire 2 and 130.5 in wire 1. All right, attack all these problems the same way. Go ahead and look at the x's, the components and the forces going in the x direction, and the y's, both the components and the forces going in the y direction, separately. And in all of these static equilibrium problems, the total force is zero. See you later.